Welcome into an episode of The Latest with Devin Dobek alongside Nick Torsha filling in for Brennan. We have a hockey playoff special for you set to go today. The Spartans are in the playoffs. Big game. They clinched the three seed after a huge win over North Middlesex, led by that top first line. They had one heck of a game. Outstanding hockey. Um, all hope seemed to be lost when they took a 7-1 loss to Longmeadow. Um, North Middlesex a strong team, you know, pulling from different towns. Um, more of a communal school, but they pulled out a 2-1 win, and they were also fighting for a playoff spot. So it was pretty big. Torsh, what did you like about that last game? Yeah, um, I think the Spartans were definitely in it to win it. Uh, that first line, they, they showed up. Um, and, I th yeah, like, De like Devin said, they, they were trying to fight for that same spot too. Um, unfortunately, they did not you know, achieve that. But uh, it, it was a, right down to the end there. It was a close game. Um, you know, we scored that. We scored that first goal, then they came back, um, and I thought it was very tough, close there, coming down to the second, and then when, when Sino popped that, that second goal, I just kind of knew. Yeah, how about Saracino and Moynihan? 11 points apiece in the last four games. That's a total of 22 points combined in the last four games. They are playing unbelievable hockey, and that's nothing on Teddy Kuhn. He's also been up there, but I'm not sure of his exact number. Um, t yeah, t uh, Teddy up there in assists, um, yeah, with, 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 with Moynihan just going into the corners and getting that, that puck out, Nick staying where he's supposed to be, and Teddy with the, su with the support, I think that line flows very, very well. That top line is definitely the reason they're in this playoff, yeah. especially after how well they've played. Yeah, um, I think, yeah, so they definitely pulled through. A few big games, um, and let's just touch back the St. Peter Marion game, how'd that feel to get on the ice, Nick? Um, um that was, uh... Year? Incredible experience. Uh, coach Reed, I shook his hand once again and just said, thanks, Coach. Um, it was a dream that came true, and uh, I couldn't have done it with everybody on my team. Um, they supported me the whole way through, and it was just a, an experience I'll never And congrats on your forget. first uh, varsity point. That's yeah, the, big the, 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 the goal the was goal. big. We, um, I, I knew it was that three-on-two when you came into the zone, and I knew House was, was, was with me, and <clears> Travis <throat> was on the other side, and House kept the puck in, and Eli was right there, and he just – gave me that pass in front and put it home. Yeah, it was an incredible moment for you, and I'm sure you enjoyed and cherished every second of that. Oh, yeah. But back to the Barry League playoffs. So the seedings. East Long Meadow, I was under the impression once we beat uh, North Middlesex that we would be playing West Springfield, but I was actually wrong. Then I was informed we would play Chog. That was also wrong. We will, in fact, be playing Long Meadow, who we lost 4-3 and 7-1 to. So I'd say the tables are tipped in their favor a little bit. Uh, but... Uh, East Long Meadow, the three seed. West Springfield actually got the four seed, which I think is pretty shocking. So it's Chog, Long Meadow, East Long Meadow, West Springfield. Correct. Yeah, the final um, sheet did come out, and uh, it's it's very interesting because the thing with Long Meadow is they don't even have the 500 points to be in the Barry, uh, but they do have the overall record for the league, mm -hmm. um, which has brought them through. So they will win the league, no matter if they win Western Mass or not for for this year. They they will have the league award. Yeah, um, it's pretty crazy because uh, when you think last year with Barron, 200-plus uh, points, um, their yeah. strength of schedule this year was very hard because of you know how well they did last year. Um, but obviously the team without him uh, suffering a little bit, but still yeah. a two-seed, a league champ, as you said, so pretty special for them. Yeah. Um, and we are lined up for a pretty special game between the Spartans and Lancers. So it will be Thursday at 6 o'clock. Um, very excited. drop. Um, but let's talk a bit about the team. So you have some pictures here that you put together for so, us. So um, short slide here. So Dante Ficini, um, our goalie here for, for the Spartans, has been the backbone of the team. Um, he's been playing for the past – he's been on varsity for the past four years. Um, his freshman year didn't see a ton of action, but for the past th three years um, he's been in net. Uh, we were very well, fortunate. You had Ron Karate yes, we, last we, year too. we did have Zach uh, the second half of the year, which was huge for the Spartans. Um, and I definitely think Dante has, uh, you know, worked up to that point, and I, and I think he's definitely been the, the reason why we've he made it this far. He has been very strong. Uh, this is not the Dante Ficini we're used to seeing the past couple of years, no. and I say that with the most love to him, but he yeah. was not the best goaltender in the entire world um, the past couple of seasons. But this year he has really he showed, showed up, up yeah. gotten bigger, a lot of training in the offseason. He's been a big reason the Spartans have been doing so well. Um, but here we have an anthem picture. Um, yeah, this was a picture that was taken uh, for the St. P Peter game. Um, just, I, I think, a photograph that kind of pulls all of us to, together. Um, a special group of guys, especially for this year because of all the seniors. There are 12 mm -hmm. of us um, and a special group of guys that have worked very, very hard to make it this far. 
Yes, definitely, indeed. Um, so also, Eli Rockine got a few minutes. Um, on your co-manager that yes. you guys got on the ice. So another shout out to him too. Uh, Eli did get. Um, he got a couple more um, in in the third. He started the third with me and Moynihan. Um, very aggressive kid. Very good kid. He's been alongside with me uh, since the beginning, since we started. Um, he's always been there to help out, and uh, he's a huge part of the team. Yeah, 100%. So uh, practice, how's practice been going? You're kind of our inside analyst because you've been every Spartans hockey yeah. practice aside from today, of course. Um, you know, working um, with Reed, watching film with the team. How's everything shaping up for this game? How have the Spartans prepared? So we did film this past night for just under four hours, and we went through the long metal film. We watched how they take the face-offs um, and all that, uh, and we just kind of went through it, and we just had to... Um, you know, we, we had to specifically learn what we did wrong, and, um, you know, we just had to pull through and, and figure out how to get inside their head. Yeah, a lot of practice and man hours, and um, we have a big question mark pictured right there. Mark Shvetsov, he's had a collarbone injury since very early in the season. Uh, yes. What are you, the are you optimistic game. First about home, him? First uh, home game. Yeah, Mark, um, so he... he so it, it's kind of tough to say. Um, he is trying to get cleared. He I has be, practiced with the team. Yes, he has Very been, talented player. Yeah. One um, of the best shots on the team. Yeah. Very fast, very quick, good with the hands. Um, o overall, just fast in, in general. I think Mark, um, I believe it's past the six weeks uh, for a collarbone break, but I'm not sure that if he's officially cleared yet. Um, but he was on second line with Jack Morehouse and Andy Miller. And I think uh, with him and House, he worked very, very well. What do you think... Uh, if he comes back, how do you think he'll uh, flow in? So Where do you think he'll play? I think uh, Teddy Kuhn, when he first got on first line, I don't think he lived up to that spot. But I think he's fit as the in games, very well. Yeah, I think as the games have, have gone on, and he's been with Mike and, and, and Nick, um, I think they have supported him a lot. Uh, he's kind of lived up to that spot, so I'm not sure it'll be interesting to see if Mark does come back for the playoffs. It'll be very interesting to see where he fits in and where Coach, where coach puts him. Yeah, definitely. Um, so definitely a big question mark. Um, let's talk about leadership. Uh, two captains, two uh, assistant captains on Three. the team. Three. Three. Dante oh, yeah. Ficini Dante recently. Uh, I forgot to add that so in. So Mike Moynihan, yeah. heart and soul of this team, natural-born leader, you know, in and out of the classroom, on and off the ice, just an outstanding um, man, player, um, and teammate. Um, he, I think, is going to have to be a big reason the Spartans um, win this game. Yeah, Mike is uh, very aggressive. Um, I've said this many, many times. You throw him in the corner, you throw him in there with three, four, five guys, he'll just dig that, that puck out. Uh, extremely aggressive and, and just works hard. You know, you, yeah. you can show, especially at, at practice, throughout all the drills, he just, he's always on, he tries to be on point as much as he can, and you can really see when he messes up or, or, you know, does something wrong, it really affects him, so it shows that he has the heart. Yeah, and he's a big reason Nick Saracino has all these goals setting Nick up, as yeah. you were talking about earlier. Yeah, no, very, um, not discrediting Nick, uh, but yeah, very good pair. They definitely work together, and they're just meant to be on that line. Um, yeah, and then our two alternate captains, um, or Owen, assistant, however you Owen want to Owen Kervik and Jack Morris. Are three now. And, and Dante, Dante Ficini. Ficini. received a letter after how well he's been playing yeah. the leadership he showed Coach brought him to up. the very... Uh, coming up young roster, um, but what do you have to say about those three guys? Um, I think, uh, you know, Jack, not a high-scoring player, um, but hey, that's okay. He, he uh, I believe he's leading in assists. I'm not sure, sure though, but he, uh, again, just kind of like Mike, very aggressive, um, tries to win as much as he can at the dot, and uh, just to... And, just hits. Yeah, yeah he's one what of the few I like players on most, the team that hits. Sorry to cut you off, but no, what I like most about Morehouse is he's one of the few physical players on the team. Spartans don't tend to throw the body around a lot, which no. I think could come back to hurt him, uh, the team, uh, especially in this playoff game. But he is one of the more physical players. He will give you 110%. He'll block a puck, you know. He'll barely be able to stand on one leg, and he'll finish his shift, yeah. get off the ice. Um, just a very strong player, but yeah. battling some illness. Do you think that will affect him in the game? Um, yeah, he uh, had a one-on-one -on -one temperature, I believe, two days ago. Uh, but he has made it to, to practice. I think he'll be all right. Um, he usually pulls through. And he likes to score big goals in big games, as we've seen in the past couple of years, when you think Minichog, West, West Springfield. So, you know. Yeah, he tied up the Chaw game last year. And as for Owen, um, another great player. He has the size. He has the speed. Um, I think what Owen knows best is he knows the game best. His IQ, as I, I, I like to say, his he dad just, is he, very talented coach. Yeah, he knows where to be, and he and he's a very 
coachable kid. I like the quiet confidence he kind of carries himself with. Yeah, not, not a, a boastful guy, no. loves, does his own thing. And he um, keeps it to himself, and, and there's no reason to brag. He, he gets out there, he gets a job done, and, and, and that's what we, we like to see yeah. on the team. So now moving on, you got a lot of under kind of under-the-radar guys. How about the play of Sean Higgins in the past few games? Sean Higgins, you know, uh, an average defenseman, but the last few games he's looked like a completely different player. I really have liked how Higgins has played the past few games. Yeah, Sean uh, being on JV his freshman year and then sophomore, uh, junior, and obviously this year on, on varsity. I think Sean has come a long way. Um, and like I said, kind of like Owen, knows the game, knows where to be. Um, I, I just, just, like I said, gets a job done. I really like to play at Higgins. You know, he in the beginning of the season, turning the puck over, you know, not a reliable defenseman, not the fastest skater. No. But lately he's, he's been handling the puck well. Great passes, throwing the body around a little bit. I really like to play a Sean Higgins, and I think if he keeps that up, it'll be huge for the Spartans. And I think with, with, with Kologi, number 15, being on his line, I think it, it, help, it helps out a lot. Yeah, Kologi uh, probably has the most skills, yeah. I'd say, of the defensemen. And the nice thing about him is he was here his freshman year. Um, it was right before... Uh, I mean, as you could say, the Barry kind of changed. Um, so he's seen that real on ice. He's one of the under, only underclassmen that has seen that real on ice action. Um, so I think uh, from that, his freshman year, and I think he's come a long way. Yeah, and then we have Andy Miller. He's been probably the streakiest player yeah. in Spartan hockey history. You know, popping off for four goals in the first game against St. Peter Marion. Yeah, that was um, insane. A couple more. He's, you know, he'll throw in a, a lot goal of great here opportunities. And there. Yeah. Um, but he is also one of the more physical players on the team, likes to throw the body. Also takes a lot of hits, though, so he's got to be careful there. Yeah. But Miller, you know, he's good for a few goals. He's smart with the puck, gives everything he has. He's an effort Hard guy, worker. a grind worker. And I think he could have a chance to be an impact player against Long Meadow. Definitely. Um, moving on, you know. Uh, so just a couple shots here. Um, coach Reed, uh, been the Spartans coach, I believe, for the past 18 years. Um, and has definitely been another big part in our push here to get to the playoffs. Um, coach Reed has been in the playoffs um, for the past, since I've been here for the past two times. And it has been against the Lancers. Um, and appeared in Western Mass He's in made 2009. It our freshman year, so probably 2017, yep. and then Last our junior year. year. Yep. Uh, uh, sophomore year, they missed playoffs. Won us the league in 2009 and did appear in the Western Mass the final game, unfortunate loss um, there. But I, I think with his drills and his know how and his, his passion for the sport, he, he can. Uh, how has he he's, he's been prepared the team for what's at stake? You know, big stage. He lost 5 1 to medal both times in the past three years. What is the different mindset he's giving you guys so that doesn't happen again? Uh, I think this year he's he's kind of brought it back a little bit and he's kind of gone back to the basics, the basic drills, the basic kind of go out there with confidence and, and, and hard work. And, you know, he says to us all the time, he says, these, these are the moments that will never go away and you'll never get this back. Um, and and he, he knows it because at one point he was a Spartan. So I think he definitely knows our shoes and he knows how how yeah, close. pretty big game, and what could be the last hockey game, the last time uh, 12 of our seniors ever, could ever put on a jersey. jersey yeah. so, um, uh, pretty scary to think about that. Um, now we have the third line. Let's talk about the third line a little bit. So that line right now, as it stands, uh, Braden Dobek, Luke Haynes, Luke Haynes and, and Liam Asher. Asher. So they've been, Braden Dobek has been strong on the dot. My brother, um, I'm not one to give him any yeah. credit by any means at all. No, we I, have, no, I got we you. have a very competitive relationship. But I've been very impressed with how not being a center, this is his first time as a center. Really? He's come in, and I'd say his face-off percentage is like right up there, 70%. Yeah. He's looked really strong, you know. Um, um, but that third line, you know, they get a few shifts here and there. I think their job is to hold the Lancers when they're on the ice. Yeah. You know, not do anything fancy, not push. But, but just keep that puck. Between Haynes, Asher, and Dobek, they should be able to do that. Give the top two lines a rest. Oops. And uh, hopefully that will help them. Yeah, yeah. Liam Asher, uh, JV is freshman year and then on varsity for the past three years. Um, again, a player that knows the game, very aggressive, um, tries to get in there, I believe, as much as he can. Um, he just, he, you know, he knows the game. Um, he knows where to be. And I think he definitely works very, very well. Uh, you have Luke Haynes with, with the height and Brady with and the dot. And he's just, a strong player. Braden takes yeah. a lot of hits, but he also draws a lot of penalties. Yeah. Luke Haynes just a big player. You know, he's very skilled. Yeah. He just sometimes he's got to remember his position. If he remembers his position, I wouldn't be surprised if Luke Haynes puts up a point tomorrow night. Yeah, yeah it could, be a, could be a uh, possibility. And the other thing with Liam, Liam uh, filled he's a in fast skater. on second you line. Know? 
He's been a little timid in the past, but I think lately he's kind of been putting himself yeah. out there more, yeah. realizing this is his last season. Yeah. He doesn't want to lose that third no. line spot, and he's been giving it 110 percent. And he's really starting he to a, show up, be a leader for those young guys on the third line. That he's yeah. At. When when Mark that unfortunate break during the Minichaw game, Liam Asher did fit, fill in for the, the second line spot, and I think he he yeah. held up very very well. Point, I think. I believe so. Yeah. Not um, against Minichaw, but the game after. Yeah. He he held up there for a few games, and I think. Um, he, he lived up to that spot, um, especially being a, a senior on the team, being with the program for the past few, few years. I definitely think he deserved that spot. Yeah, so, and then finally we have Travis uh, Arnold. Travis Arnold and his defensive partner. Yeah, uh, uh, Kendrick LaFleche. Yeah, so um, LaFleche, he's more of a forward converted to defenseman, so sometimes you'll see him take up the puck, not used to the defensive position, but a big dude, likes yeah. to lay a hit every once in a while, but he's got to stop. Yeah. And he can't turn over the yeah, puck. That's can, his kryptonite. Um, and if yeah. he does that, the Spartans could, uh, you know. Definitely a big advantage in the corners. You're just not going to move him. Uh, he's a kid that probably one of the biggest kids in the Barry, and he just can't be moved. That's his advantage, and he just uh, got to keep the guys He's outside. just got to be smart with the puck. A very yeah. skilled player, and like we said, he li he's still got his offensive roots in him, so he likes to take yeah, up the was, puck, but he's going to have to be careful with that, especially in a playoff. He game. was on third line last year um, and played, played very, very well. Um, and then, uh, as for Tr Travis Arnold, uh, not a, a big guy, but he's he knows what to do with the puck. You'll you Travis. don't see him make too many mistakes. He doesn't yeah. make a lot of turnovers. Um, but when he does, um, he's got to keep his head. Go south, yeah. Yeah, he's got to keep his head. Uh, he's player, very hard on himself. Yeah, he's been playing for his his, his whole life. Um, again, for him, just got to be. You know, he could be he, he could be very very good. Just have to like Devin said, uh, be very very smart with the puck. But I mean, you know. Goes out there. I think he works very well with, with Kendrick, and just um, especially in that North Middlesex game, did a great job on keeping the guys on the outside on those two on ones or one on one or whatever it was. Just did a good job of that. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, some locker room scenes here. Um, it's going to be pretty big. You yeah, know, you very, don't want to uh, see them. Uh, I believe we'll be rocking the red, so you don't want to see the last yeah. that for the last time. We um, uh, yeah, very incredible to be with the Spartans for the past two years, um, and just to see how it all goes down. The speech in the locker room, <clears> the, uh, getting to the high school, and then that that ride to to the game is very incredible. So Torres, let's start to wrap things up. Um, what are your keys to the game in order to, for the Spartans to pull out a win? So I think what the Spartans have to do um, and need to do is they need to play with the confidence. They need to they need to give every single ounce of energy. Um, it could, because this is it. It all comes down to this. There is no next year. There is no next game. There is no next shift. Um, they'll have roughly 15 to 16 shifts for the whole game. Defense might get a little bit more, but every si si single shift they have to play their position. They have to get aggressive in the corners, and they just have to they have to get those opportunities. For me, I like to break it down uh, a few ways. That top line, when they have a bad game, the Spartans get absolutely crushed. Mike Moynihan, and Nick Cercio, and Teddy Q need to have the game of their lives. Yeah. They need to put points on the board. And I think that will be a very key thing. Then you got on the other end, um, Dante Ficini. He is another one of those make or break players. Dante's got to have a good game, not he's to put play pressure on him, mind. but he's got to play his game. You know, we've seen that tough loss against Westfield 2 1. He yeah. wasn't, he made some huge saves. Very good saves. But then some of the softer goals that went in, you're like, ugh. But Dante, very strong. Kinda he's a key that, yeah. part. He is a key part of the Spartans. He is the team. backbone of the team. Um, and if he has a good game, the Spartans should be able to at least give Longmeadow a run for their money, if not win the game. Oh, yeah. um, and then finally, uh, Longmeadow's goalie, um, obviously you can't discredit him. Their record, um, not the best, um, but he has played well against Barry League teams. Um, but, you know, once in a while, in, I think we played them – uh, in our first game, and he let in three goals on 18 shots, so not one of the highest saves. Yeah, percentage. it was 18 to 44. So you shots. know what? If he has a tough game, the Spartans could capitalize on his mistake, um, and we'll see what happens. I think but. what was very tough with that game is we came out in that third, and they just, within, I believe, 15 or 16 seconds, they popped a, uh, a just a quick shot, and it was just something that Dante, you know, just a really, really quick shot, and it just un unfortunately found its way. And out. then finally, the Spartans have got to be physical. They're not a hitting team yeah. aside from Morehouse. We're going to need to hit on Thursday. Miller. They got to throw some bodies, you know, get the crowd into it. Sometimes you may draw a penalty, but you can't get down on yourself. You got to go out, still play that same aggressive way, um, if that makes sense. But yeah, yeah no, it does. Just, yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's going to be a fight. And it's going to be a battle, and at the end of it, I just. I hope we pull through. It's going to come down to a lot of leadership, too. Moynihan and Saraceno need to get the... If the Spartans yeah. go down, 
um, which they have in the past frequently. Um, they have to pick each other up. They gotta pick each other up. They can't put their heads down and float around on the ice. They gotta keep their heads. They, we'll they go down, they gotta players. score two goals. Every goal they get, they gotta score two more. Yeah. That's gotta be the mentality they've gotta have um, in order for them to pull off an upset here. So final score prediction, Nick. I know you're Spartan hockey fanatic, one of the biggest fans ever in East Long Meadow history for the hockey team. And manager, you know, yeah. you've been out on the ice with them. I want your completely unbiased opinion. I don't want if the Spartans do this, if what do you think is going to happen? What is going to be the final score between number two Long Meadow and number three East Long Meadow? Um, I think what's going to happen is we're going to go out there in that first, and I think especially those top two lines are going to are going to just give them a run for their money. Um, you know, lack of a better term, I, I think they're going to. Be very very strong off the beginning, and I think if we do clinch that lead, they'll get too comfortable, and um, we might give Long Meadow a slight chance to believe they're still in it. I think that's a big big thing. We need to shut them down. The earlier we shut them down, the earlier they can think, okay, we're you know we're not in this game. Um, we and just need to get that first. You got to take into account that Long Meadow has kind of taken this game lightly. You know, kind of. Like, oh, we crushed the Spartan 7-1 yep. last week. You know, they kind of think this is going to be an easy win. Um, so, you know what? We're not really sure what's going to happen. And um, since this... But if you have to give a number, what is it going to be in the winner? If I were to give a score, I think it will be a high-scoring game. So, I'd have to say... I'd have to say 3-2 or 4-3 East Long Meadow. All right, tough one. Unfortunately, a Long Meadow, a solid team. They know how to move the puck. Um, and they get a lot of shots on net. You think they've outshot the Spartans like 45 to something under 20 both times. I think they're a strong so. club. Dante will have a strong game, but I still think the amount of shots they're, they're going to get, it. they're going to capitalize. I see Longmeadow, unfortunately, pulling out a 4-2 to two win if I have to make an unbiased decision. But I will be pulling for the Spartans with every bone in my body. Yeah. Um, I really think that if they click on all cylinders, that they will have a chance to win this game. Um, but we will we won't know till Thursday. Yeah. And then the other Barry League game, just a prediction: Minichog number one versus number West four West side. Springfield. What do you see as a score prediction for that game? I believe uh, it's tough to say. I believe West Side um, has a little bit edge o over Minichog. I do too, even though they're a four seed. And I think They've if I were to them this year already, if I were to say a score, that'll probably be another high scoring game. I'd say six to four. Uh, or six to three, six to five, uh, West Side will beat Minichar. Yeah, I, I like what you're saying. I I'm gonna go with five two West Springfield. Strong club. Uh, Spartans topped them once. Yeah, they um, made a very strong far team this year. Um, so it'll be interesting. But five two West Springfield, my prediction for that game. A lot of hockey in store for you and girls basketball with a game Thursday night against Hinton seven o'clock. Seven o'clock here. So if you don't feel like making the trip to Olympia Ice Center, we frown upon you. But yeah, at least support our girls here at East we'll Lincoln High School. Too. At the um, home court. Very excited. Um, yeah, just a lot going on. Any final thoughts for the Spartans? Um, yeah, since 1962, since uh, East Long Meadow High was established and had a hockey team, we have never made it to a won a championship. And after this year, um, uh, maybe after next year, uh, it'll turn into a statewide ch championship. So no um, more Western Mass. No, after it might be after next year. I could be wrong on that. Um, but yeah, this is the final push. Like I said, very special se senior class, and I, I'm confident that Coach Reed has the team to get the job done. Yeah, and as for me, um, this I don't want this to be the last game that no. I commentate. I would love to see the Spartans pull I don't want it to be wins. the last game that i got to fill water and be in the locker room for that speech and all that. Yeah, so. I would like to commentate a game, but oh, of course. 6 o'clock Thursday night. We're very excited for that Rank one. Is one the Minichog West Side game after that, 8.30? Um, or is it Saturday? It might be on Saturday. All right, um, well. We'll keep you updated. Stay tuned at the latest ELHS on Instagram. Please follow. Also follow at Spartan Hockey 2020, um, the That's official it. manager for all your Spartan Hockey news. Um, great content on there, um, but also at the latest ELHS. And thank you, everyone, to our support. Um, I'm excited. You know. Yeah, it's going to go, be. Uh, yeah, it, it's going to be a good game. As um, I said, I think we're an underdog. That's why I pick Log Metal 4-2. I think we're an underdog, but I like an underdog story, and it's been been done. We've done it. We did it against West Springfield. We did it against Minichog. Now we have one we last have one chance more. to this complete the third sweep of our third rival, and well, not sweep, but win against yeah. our third rival. 
And what a way that would be, you know, to make it to that that final game. And that final game, no turning back at that point. It's going to be all gas and no breaks, and we're just going to have to pull through. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We can't wait to see you at Olympia Ice Center. Thursday, 6 o'clock, East Long Meadow Spartans, Long Meadow Lancers. On behalf of all of us here at LCAT, Nick Torshaw alongside Devin Dobek, and we'll see you Thursday.